Netanyahu defies Biden, insisting there's no space for Palestinian state. Defiant Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu doubled down on opposition to Palestinian statehood, deepening the divide with Israel's closest international allies, as cracks in his wartime, unity, government became increasingly evident. Anger with Netanyahu is also increasingly visible on the streets, even though there is broad public support for the war. On Saturday, protesters gathered in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Caesarea and Kfar Saba, some calling for bolder action to secure the release of hostages, and others demanding the Prime Minister step down. One in Jerusalem held a placard that read, Mothers cry. We will not sacrifice our children in the war to save the right wing. Over the weekend, Netanyahu sparred publicly, if indirectly, with U.S. President Joe Biden, who for months has offered Israel almost unconditional support for its war in Gaza, at considerable political cost to his own administration, both in America and beyond. Netanyahu's spokesman claimed that in a phone call with Biden, the Israeli leader told the U.S. president that his country's security needs left no space for a sovereign Palestinian state. In his conversation with President Biden, Prime Minister Netanyahu reiterated his policy that, after Hamas is destroyed, Israel must retain security control over Gaza to ensure that Gaza will no longer pose a threat to Israel, a requirement that contradicts the demand for Palestinian sovereignty, a statement from the Israeli Prime Minister's office said. It was a barely-veiled shot at Biden, who just hours earlier had said the same conversation left him confident an independent Palestine was feasible when Netanyahu was in power. The two men had spoken for the first time in nearly a month after Netanyahu alarmed his allies by ruling out an independent Palestinian state in a press conference. He said even after fighting ends in Gaza, Israel would need to keep security control of all land west of the River Jordan. That's a necessary condition. It clashes with the principle of sovereignty but what can you do? In London, the shadow foreign secretary David Lammy was strongly critical of Netanyahu. The Israeli prime minister's rejection of a Palestinian state is morally wrong. Practically wrong. And against the interests of all people, Palestinian and Israeli, Lammy said in a speech to the Fabian Society conference, during which he was interrupted by pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Lamy added, the peaceful quest for a Palestinian state is a just cause. As Keir Starmer has said, it is the undeniable right of the Palestinian people, and the only path to guarantee a just and lasting peace for both Israelis and Palestinians. A British government spokesman described Netanyahu's comments as, disappointing. The UK's position is very clear. A two-state solution, with a viable and sovereign Palestinian state living alongside a safe and secure Israel, is the best route to lasting peace. The U.S. has repeatedly said that the establishment of an independent Palestinian state is the only path to rebuilding Gaza and ensuring Israel's long-term security. Critics said the dispute proved a useful distraction from growing domestic tension about the limited achievements of Israel's campaign in Gaza over three months into the war, the suffering of more than 100 Israelis still held hostage by Hamas, and the lack of a long-term plan for governing the enclave. This war has no purpose and no future, but prolonging it is, Netanyahu's, way of postponing engagement with the question of responsibility, the Haaretz newspaper quoted a cabinet member saying. As long as the protest, movement, is dealing with the hostages return, the protest that he fears, against the government, is delayed. After more than three months, Israeli attacks have killed nearly 25,000 Palestinians, 
most of them women and children, displaced nearly two million people and reduced much of Gaza to ruins. Hunger and disease stock crowded camps and shelters.